So this here is my brand new, slightly used, uh, electric lawn tractor. I just finished complete everything on it. Put a little charging outlet on the side, the uh, cross foot plug. And we have all the controls necessary that you would need on any lawnmower. So we got this on off, little digital display to tell you what the power level's at. This is a 48 volt version. This is a safety switch. If you slot this off while riding, it cuts power to everything. So you turn that on. Put a little display over here and an adjustment lever. So this is a throttle control. You just up it and change it to the voltage that you're going to be wanting to run the lawnmower at. There we go. You just turn it all the way off when you're done with it. Display turns off, mower turns off. Toggle the safety switch and turn it back off. Now, I went with a completely different approach than most people out there and decided to go with a lithium pack from a Chevy or GM Volt. Now as you can see, I only have one of the modules and this module is the uh, 48 volt pack of the larger, I think it's 144 volts. You can find these on eBay. Uh, that's where I got this one and this here is the uh, balance adapter. I soldered on uh, these two connectors. Uh, I had them soldered at one point. Right now they're just hooked into this this board here. So I made them into two 6S packs for a total of 12S and this is a lithium mangan manganese I believe is the pronunciation not a lithium polymer However, it has the same properties of peak voltage and nominal voltage, and you can thus use any LiPo charger. And with this, I can actually check the balance leads, and I can actually balance charge it, but I can only do half the packs at a time, simply because a 12S charger costs way too much. Um, right on the side here, is a BMS or a battery management system that I decided to go with. It's a 150 amp battery management system and turns out you cannot actually run this thing through that at the moment. However, that's okay. Uh, the lithium power seems to stay pretty balanced. Uh, I only use it for charging at the moment. This pole is negative and this pole is what this is the negative pole before the BMS, and this is what the tractor runs off of. For the, uh, the motor, it's a ME1004, I believe, or uh, I think it's MO Moat Energy or Mott Energy. You can go to their website and find out more information on there. And it's a direct translation or a direct replacement for most lawn tractor motors. And I'm not sure if you can see, but hopefully if the camera has stayed in focus, I just bolted right on the exact stacked pulley that was on there before. And I reattached the deck and all the existing cables and uh, pulleys. And also got a contactor and forget what this is called, a solen or yeah, contactor and uh, this um, controller for a golf cart and it works very well for just any old electric vehicle. The throttle I'm using is the PB6 I believe and it hooks directly using the original cable from 
this throttle lever here. It hooks directly into that. So when I pull on it, the throttle just moves with it. <laughs> Works great for controlling it. it. Stays at that place simply because of the friction within the device already. Uh, you could remove the spring here, but I think the little bit of tension that it creates is good for it. Um, keeps it nice and secure, no rattling. And the original spot for the battery is still here. I even left these uh, plugs, but they don't actually hook into anything and are pretty safe. They can even touch because I don't have this chassis grounded at the moment. Um, was not sure how the uh, components, the electrical components, would react. Such as, if you can see at the back, here, I'll move the camera. There we go. There we go. Right here, up this gray, is my contactor. There you go. I think it's focusing better. Yes. The uh, contactor there, and I'm not sure if it can be um, better placed. It, it's kind of, I, I think it worked out very well for everything. Simply, if I need to change this motor, I can unbolt these four bolts I put in, pop the whole motor out, and put in a new one if I ever needed to, or diagnose it, or uh, install new brushes. I got some L brackets from Lowe's and that is where I made this nice shelf here using the original gas tank position holders and oh yes the battery is also sitting on L brackets I extended the chassis just a little bit the original chassis I might even have the piece it's my nice bucket of parts don't appear to have it, but I can show you. The original mount for the hood went out to about here. So it's really not that big of a difference. It's a hand's length, four fingers, you know. Um, it seems very sturdy. And it's been working really well. These, however, these metal bars I'm using are just some angle iron I got from Home Depot or Lowe's. My original attempt at the angle iron, I attempted to use this. This is just flat with whole angle iron here. I think I still have, yes I do. This is an example of it. Did not want to hold very well under the tension and torque that that motor can create. And started to warp and bend and whenever you would initialize the the deck, the the bar here would just let the motor tilt in every, any angle it wanted. With this setup, there really is not any give. It's a very, very, very sturdy setup. Now, I realize the hood is missing I, uh, a radiator or a cover there and a bulb on the right, but Honestly, it doesn't need it. It's just really just for looks. And here, I'm gonna start it up and let you guys hear me drive it without the deck on and a little bit of a drive. And by drive, I'm just going to move it forward and backwards in my garage with the deck on. Now let it start up. I'll go the switch. Let's choose a. There we go. I like to run it at 36. It seems to be a good lawnmower speed. Anything higher just sounds like it wants to kill you. That 
noise you're actually hearing is the transmission or the uh, hydrostatic drive. All right. Let's engage the lawnmower. The voltage drop when I turn on the deck actually causes that number to go drastically down. It'll pop right back up, give it a few minutes. And I've actually been able to mow for quite a bit using this method. And if you couldn't hear me, I've been actually been able to mow for quite a bit using this method. It's a 45 amp hour battery. However, if I need to in the future, I think it might be possible to use two of these motor, two of these batteries side by side, giving me a total of almost 90 amp hours, which would be plenty. Uh, right now, I get about 30, 35 minutes of mow time, and I actually get a very long. I haven't even been able to hit it runtime length. So, given two of these with a 200 amp constant rating, and that's exactly what the motor wanted. Uh, you can you can go for a very very long time. You can mow for six an hour, an hour and twenty minutes. Now, I decided to not do anything permanent to hold this down. Just some two I think it's hundred and fifty or two hundred pound zip ties, and they are very tense. Uh, they have a lot of tension between them. <clears throat> and I have read online that you can cut straight down here. Obviously, you should not do this. Um, because this was originally meant to be water cooled, however, I'm not pulling the same types of uh, requirements or amperage or runtime as a car would expect, so it's just got air cooling uh, at the moment. Uh, I use these channels as a as a hold or a tie down, and you can cut this off right here along this wall here, and the battery packs only run the length of the chat the top so you just cut straight down and that is would be the new width of your battery and you could put two of these in here possibly three simply side by side if i rotated this way took this battery put it in here and put another one next to it they would both fit and that would be 90 amp hours from lithium power and this battery only weighs I wouldn't even say 20 pounds. It probably weighs less than that. And so I don't have that gross expense of weight from four 12 volt car batteries in my car vehicle here. This thing is also very torquey. If you gas it quickly or if you press the throttle quickly, the front two tires will actually lift off the ground. You will do a wheelie in your lawnmower. I have some experience with this, and all these RC cars are large proof of that, coming from that and transitioning into the larger hobby here of just playing and building. I got this nice lithium battery charger. It is not a balanced charger, just a charger, but it accepts a lot of the um, signals from the BMS that tell it when it's done or not. However, if it reads 50.4 volts, which is because I have 12S, not 13S. It will cut off and assume the battery is charged fully. However, that is not the safest route if you don't have a BMS. If you have a BMS, this is great. Without a BMS, you're assuming all of your cells are balanced to 4.2 each, or whatever the, the uh, peak voltage will be. So, uh, yeah, peak voltage will be across all of your cells. You could end up with vast vast differences between cells if you don't balance charge this especially with the way I am not going to the BMS when driving it so the BMS just maintains and balances when I am charging now to plug it in simply 110 volt outlet it's American and you just plug it right in here and when you'd go uh, that little light on the box will change to red however it is fully charged so it will not change at the moment And that was it. Let me know what you think. 
Hope you enjoyed.